Hey everyone, Boxbrain here. I'm making a medieval fantasy sandbox called Goblin Menace where you can build your own army of NPC characters and lead them into battle against hordes of goblin creatures. Um, last week I made a tutorial on how you can make these individual animation nodes that are easily con composable. Uh, you can drag and drop them underneath any object and animate them with this animation node. Um, this week I wanted to show some more complex animation examples, uh, kind of like these apples here where they can drop off a tree and do a bounce and roll to a random position, right? So that's actually a compound animation that's composed of multiple sub animations. Um, so I want to show you how you can uh, put these animation nodes together in a really simple way and, and to create any kind of animation behaviors you want. All right, so let's get started. Um, first, I'll do a quick demo using this more simplified example. Um, I'm going to leave a link to the video from last week on how I set up this scene here. I'm not going to go over this scene setup today, uh, but essentially, uh, you know, you have a background, uh, you have a player with a camera, uh, and then you have an object that you want to animate. Uh, and the animation is triggered by this area 2D. Um, where whenever a hitbox hits this object, uh, enters into this area, we're going to play whatever animation it is we want to play. So in this case, we're just going to play the bounce animation. Uh, so let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, so you have this player, it's moving around. And then whenever you strike the coin, whenever this player hitbox enters into the coins area, uh, is going to make that animation uh, pop out, right? So it's going to make the coin bounce. Uh, so to demonstrate a uh, similar animation, um, so let's say we want the coin to, instead of bouncing, we want it to roll to a random position instead, right? So we have another animation for roll, uh, very similar concept to the bounce animation. Uh, in this case, it's just interpolating um, the position and the rotation of the coin. So making the coin move to a random position uh, and then also rotating the coin along the way. And you can set a duration for it. So I set it here to be two seconds by default. Um, so very similar to the bounce animation. Actually the bounce animation is a little bit more complex. Uh, but now let's say we want the bounce to, uh, the coin to simply roll instead of bounce. Um, so you can simply select that animation to play instead. Uh, and whenever you hit the coin, um, it's going to make it roll to a random position. So let's, uh, by default, I have my roll uh, animation to be a one time use. Uh, so we can turn that off actually. Um, so we go into the editor, turn off single use by default, uh, and we'll avoid that error there. So. Uh, now it's multiple use and whenever you hit the coin, it's going to roll to a kind of random position here. Uh, so now let's see how we might want to have it both bounce and roll to a random position at the same time. So i.e. bounce to a random position, right, or bounce and roll. Uh, and that's very easy. So you go into the script for the coin. So instead of just calling roll, you can also call bounce.play. Um, and that's going to make it do both. Um, there we go. So it's going to bounce and do a slight roll to a random position. Um, so that's with two separate animation nodes, but let's say we want to create, um, a single animation node. That's a compound animation of these two sub animations. Um, and we want to be able to, you know, use that parent node in a modular way and compose it into something else, right? Um, so instead of having to deal with two separate animation nodes, we can create uh, a third animation node. Let's call this uh, bounce uh, and row. And then we're going to give it a script, call it bounce and row script. Um, so that's down here. Um, and then we're going to have it extend the animator class. I, I'm going to just kind of show you how this works before I dive into the code in more detail. But uh, all you need to do is to have it extend the animator class, which we'll go over and then override uh, the play function, the play behavior. 
Um, so in the play function, we're gonna have it. Uh, we're gonna have bounce and roll as children of the this node. Uh, and under the play function, we're gonna have bounce dot play, and then roll dot play. Perfect. Okay. So and then we're gonna track both of these nodes inside bounce and roll, and then in the coin script, we're gonna just call bounce and roll dot play instead, right? So we're just calling this one animation. So you can see this as a single animation node that calls two sub animations. Um, now we're composing these animator nodes inside each other. And that works fine. Cool. Um, the magic that uh, kind of makes all of this happen is inside the animator class. So I'll do a quick walkthrough of that. Um, so this is the animator class and it has all of the methods you need to be able to easily compose animator nodes inside each other and define custom uh, play behaviors that override uh, this play method. Um, so uh, the default play method is just going to emit a signal to tell um, whatever else that this animator has been completed. And if it's a single use animation node, it's going to delete it at the end. Um, but the part that allows for the composability is that uh, it's always going to uh, look for a host. Uh, so these animator nodes are going to act on either a host node, which is the parent containing the animator, uh, or host sprite, uh, which can either be uh, have like a can be a regular sprite node or an animated sprite, and is going to have these kind of uh, node paths that you can also define. Um, by default, I always have my sprite node path be either sprite or animated sprite. That's kind of the dependency and the built-in assumption of how this works. Uh, but you can all, certainly also customize this to fit however your project is set up. Um, and then, um, so these, uh, whenever it's ready, um, it actually will initialize by uh, going down its tree and making sure uh, any descendants of whatever animator node is uh, initializing uh, have the same host and host sprite as the the original ancestor node. Um, so if you have a tree of animator nodes here, so let's say we have one for bounce and roll, when it gets ready, it's going to set the host and host sprite for its uh, descendants, the bounce node and the roll node, so that everyone is animating the same thing. So that's essentially how it works. Um, so hopefully you found this uh, tutorial useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions either in the comments below or you're welcome to join our Discord channel as well.